Now, one of the many incredible things about video games, compared to other mediums at least, is the freedom granted to players to steer the story in any direction they like. But sometimes the narrative pathways aren't quite as obvious as you might expect, and you can't always be sure of the ripple effect a choice will have on the story later down the line, or you know, like five minutes from now. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 bad video game decisions that you didn't understand until it was far too late. Number 10. Attacking Vicky – Batman The Telltale Series Now, bar a few exceptions, true choice in Telltale's stable of episodic adventure games is pretty few and far between, and so when Batman faces off against Vicky Vale aka Lady Arkham in the final episode of Batman The Telltale Series, fans probably weren't quite prepared for what was coming. Batman shows up to rescue a kidnapped Alfred from Vicky, at which point players are presented with a choice – either remove the cowl and stop Vicky assaulting Alfred, or attack Vicky. Vicky directly. Now, given that Batman is a highly skilled combatant, revealing his identity risks the lives of his loved ones, and Alfred straight up tells you not to compromise yourself for his sake, so players can't really be blamed for choosing to attack Vicky. However, this is soon enough confirmed to be the bad option of the two, given that it results in Alfred being shot and blinded in one eye by Vale. If you decide to unmask instead, Bruce simply gets shot in the ear, which while blowing a decent chunk of his ear flesh away doesn't seem to have any impact on his hearing ability. With this in mind, it's clear that unmasking was the right choice, albeit only in retrospect. Number 9. Shooting Mendez – Call of Duty Black Ops 2 In the latter half of Call of Duty Black Ops 2's campaign, players take control of an undercover CIA agent as JSOC forces close in on villainous Nicaraguan arms dealer Raul Mendez. In a pivotal scene, Mendez approaches the player and hands them a gun, ordering them to shoot a captured comrade Mike Hunt Harper in the head. Now, the player is then given a choice to shoot Harper or shoot Mendez. And when a choice seems too good to be true, that's usually because it is, as this game soundly proves. Because if you decide to shoot Mendez, he'll block your shot and respond by shooting you dead with a pistol of his own. But the outcome is ultimately far more dire than merely losing a single character, as your death here results in Chloe Lynch also dying in the very next mission due to your character not being alive to protect her. In turn, this prevents players from achieving the game's best ending. Ouch. On the flip side, choosing to shoot Harper dead does indeed result in Harper's death, which definitely sucks, but it's absolutely the lesser of two evils here in terms of body count and overall devastation. Number 8. Refusing to choose – Fable 3 Fable 3 wastes no time at all in saddling players with an absolutely horrible, agonising choice when their older brother Logan, the seemingly tyrannical King of Albion, forces them to choose between executing their love interest or the leaders of the protest against Logan's corrupt rule. Now, from a purely utilitarian perspective, condemning a single person to death over several people makes a crude amount of sense, but what about the extra option of maybe just not making a choice? Players might decide that they want to stick two fingers up at their brother and refuse to take part in his cruel game, but such defiance ultimately ends up having a far bleaker cost than either of the two options. If you put your controller down and refuse to decide, Logan will respond by straight up killing everyone on both sides of the gambit, because he's that special kind of <coughs> If you hoped that your act of non-participation might force Logan to see the error of his ways, well, you'd be dead wrong and so too would the crowd. Number 7. Saving Trish – Infamous one of Infamous's big decisions offers the player two choices – a swift kick in the balls or a swift kick in the balls with a big patronising telling off at the same time. Great. You see, later in the game, villain Kessler gives protagonist Cole a choice – either save his love interest Trish or six of Trish's doctor colleagues, both of whom are rigged up to explosives, with Cole only having enough time to rescue either one of them. Now, Kessler emphasises the dilemma enough – the needs of the few versus the needs of the many – that the player might rightly feel that he's actually just messing with them, Joker style, and doing the good action of saving the doctors might actually have a negative outcome. And on top of all of that, humans are emotional creatures and so many would simply pick Trish, the known quantity, over some random doctors. Utilitarianism be damned. But horrifyingly though, if you do indeed choose to save Trish, Kessler can't help but express his disappointment at your selfish choice before it's revealed that Trish was actually a decoy, and she was actually rigged up with the doctors all along, resulting in her death. But before before a wounded Trish dies, she can't help but rub salt in the wound by telling Cole how ashamed she is of his choice and what he's become. 
brutal, right? And by the way, if you do decide to save the Doctors, Trish dies more or less the same way, except she uses her dying words to express pride in Cole. Fantastic, thank you. Fa great. Cool. Number 6. The Revelation Path Fire Emblem Fates. Now, some choices in games don't have to be about who lives and dies. Sometimes you can elect to play a game a certain way and just wind up with a much poorer experience. And Fire Emblem Fates was initially released in two versions, Birthright and Conquest, reflecting the two story paths the player can take. Now, at the start of the game, protagonist Corrin must choose to support either the Kingdom of Hoshido or Noah. Now, while there's no real consensus on which of the two campaigns is the superior choice, I mean, they're both pretty great, a few weeks after the game's release, Release, a third path called Revelation was released as DLC. Now, Revelation allows the player to choose neither side, but instead rally both kingdoms against a common enemy, the Dragon Anankos. Sounds great, right? Although critics generally praised the third path, the fan response was decidedly more polarised, with many criticising the roughshod story, clunky map design, and atrocious unit balance. All in all, it felt very rushed, like throwing together campaign released mere weeks after the main game. Some have even gone so far as to call Revelations the worst game in the entire Fire Emblem series, a dire outcome for players who preferred not to pick sides, but rather unite their families against actual evil. So being pragmatic here was a poor choice, evidently. Number 5. Curing Zoe – Resident Evil 7 In the latter stages of Resident Evil 7, players are presented with a choice to cure one of two infected characters, either their wife Mia or Zoe Baker, who has been helping you throughout the game. Now, On paper, the choice seems almost comically obvious. I mean, you pick your wife every day of the week, right? But when you consider how annoying Mia has been throughout the game and how helpful Zoe has been by comparison, you might start to ponder whether the choice was a little too obvious for its own good and that picking Mia was a one-way ticket to a bad time. Yet rest assured Capcom was playing this totally straight all the time. As picking Zoe results in Zoe being kidnapped by bioweapon villain Evelyn mere minutes later, and later on the player is forced to kill a possessed Mia. Yikes. By comparison, curing her results in both characters surviving, and given that Zoe's story is ultimately continued in the end of Zoe DLC, this is evidently also the canon choice. All the same, the game presents Mia or Zoe as a genuine good faith choice when, in fact, you're just picking the good or canon ending versus the bad and false one. Boo. Number 4. Freeing the Nipple – Lisa the Painful Now brace yourselves for this one because things are about to get pretty damn weird. Now the Lisa franchise makes a perverse art out of forcing the player to make some truly agonising decisions, such as chopping off their arms in order to save party members, in turn taking a brutal blow to their stats. Yet the most psychologically troubling choice in the series' second game, Lisa the Painful, occurs when villainous gang leader Buzzo kidnaps protagonist Brad's adopted daughter Buddy and gives him a choice – let three of his party members die or watch as Buzzo cuts off one of Buddy's nipples. Yeah, you heard that right. Now, Obviously, a child's nipple being sliced off isn't logically worse than losing three human lives, but the sheer heinous savagery of an act of, again, to a child just might cloud a player's judgement. And yet, if you choose to do the air quotes right thing and save the endangered trio, the game screws you big time by placing Buddy's severed nipple in your inventory permanently. That's right, you either lose three party members or spend the rest of the game with an internal reminder of the fresh hell that you let the bad guy wreak upon your precious daughter. So yeah, that's awful. Number 3. Leaving Batman to Die – Batman Arkham City Now, Batman Arkham City's terrific Catwoman DLC campaign sees Catwoman attempting to raid Hugo Strange's vault, and on her way out of the vault with the loot in hand, she sees footage of an unconscious Batman in mortal danger. And here the player is given a choice – drop the loot and save Batman, or peace out with the goods and leave him to his fate. Now, Catwoman is an individual of overpowering self-interest, and so players may feel compelled to do the selfish thing and abandon Batman. After all, Catwoman even says aloud, it's not like he'll die, it's Batman, right? Yet deciding to leave Batman results in a hilarious alternate ending where Batman does die, and a radio announcement from Barbara Gordon slash Oracle reveals that Gotham has gone to hell in a handbasket in the Dark Knight's absence. The Joker's forces have taken over the city, Jim Gordon is gone, and in Barbara's own words, everyone's dead, likely meaning every major heroic character in the damn franchise except her, which also means the Joker wins and also also means that that's a game over. But after a beat, the game actually rewinds itself back to Catwoman's pivotal decision, evidently encouraging players to reconsider whether they really want that hellish outcome to be the Arkham City's ending. Well, at least you get a chance for a do-over, right? Number 2. Submitting to Ocelot's Torture – Metal Gear Solid In the original Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake is eventually captured and subjected to electroshock 
torture by revolver ocelot. The player can either button mash their way to withstand the torture or let their life bar drain down and submit. Now, both are viable options to keep progressing through the story. Now, admittedly, resisting and submitting to torture isn't much of an active choice on the victim's part, but if you lack the dexterity to button mash effectively, you might assume that submitting to ocelot really isn't all that bad. But it is. Oh, it is. Because as soon as you give up, Ocelot says that he'll kill Meryl, but not before having some fun with her first. Now, this certainly seems to imply that the player will get a chance to rescue her later on in the game, but that devastatingly is not the case. If you submit, you'll find her corpse at the tail end of the story, and that's that. For your failure, though, Otacon will give you his best item in the game for future playthroughs, the Stealth Camouflage, which allows you to disguise yourself from all conventional enemies. Which I guess is a bit of a silver lining, but still, she's dead. And number one, joining Citra, Far Cry 3. I mean, there's no two ways about it. Agreeing to kill your girlfriend and join a scary, sexy priestess at the end of Far Cry 3 is an objectively terrible decision, but it's also fair to say that the full grim extent of it isn't made clear until you've made that choice. Because once you agree to join Citra, Jason will slit his girlfriend's throat, killing her, before then having ritualistic sex with Citra in order to impregnate her with a child who will become the future leader of the island's tribe. But the moment Jason finishes making his, um, uh, contribution, let's call, Citra pulls out a blade and stabs him to death, having evidently taken everything from him that she needed. It's certainly a fitting ending for being so gross as to discard your girlfriend for somebody you've known for 15 minutes, especially knowing full well that she's the sister of the psychopathic Vass. All the same, there are probably few of us out there that made this blatantly awful choice that expected to spend the last few minutes of the game going from the throes of passion to bleeding out like a stuck pig. But there we are. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 bad video game decisions you didn't understand until it was too late. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. But before I go, I just want to make sure you're treating yourself well with love and respect, because you deserve all the bloody best things in life, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, and I hope you're doing well. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.